Good morning. It's 6.09 a.m. Here in Kissimmee, Florida. We're at the trailing edge of Hurricane Debbie. There was a little more wind yesterday up to this high in this area around 30 miles an hour. Today is 20 to 30. Not too bad. A lot of rain overnight. But another version of the Tesla FSD software 12.5.1.1. So you can say this is a double point update. The release notes did not show any changes at all. And usually if there are any changes on a double point update, they're very minimal. Could have been something like a security update. Certainly not a feature change update. Could have been more training data. I don't know, what do you think? Has anyone seen anything published to say exactly what the difference is? I've seen a couple of early videos, but it didn't seem like anything special. So I'm on the way to work, and I'll go ahead and set in a destination here. And of course, you know I'll do another video later, maybe coming back home, testing out the behavior going through barricades. So I'll go ahead and activate a little bit of lightning out there. So I'm using the Insta360 X4 camera recording in 4K mode in hopes of better low light performance. In spite of the rain, if you notice the window is looking pretty good, it's because I knew the storm was coming and I prepared all the windows with Rain-X, which by the way is a great product if you've never used it in an area of rain. When you spray that on your car, you really don't even need the windshield wipers. Since the water beats up, always worth having some around. So to leave the neighborhood, we have to go through a security gate, no barricade on the exit. Last couple of times, FSD has recognized the gate and slowed down enough to wait for it to open. So that should be the first challenge for today. Plus, sometimes after a tropical storm or hurricane comes through, there's more palm fronds in the road and other debris that haven't really seen much of that today. Just a few scattered palm fronds. The storm passed just west of Tampa, northbound, and should cross the coast at the Big Bend of Florida, which is close to Tallahassee, and the prediction from there is it's going to turn east towards Brunswick and then up towards Charleston as a tropical storm. Right now it has hurricane strength. So far, so good. Five miles to go. So it's waited till the last second to slow down before a speed bump. Kind of jerked to a stop there. I had my foot near the brake since it was moving pretty fast as we approached the gate. We're slowly creeping over the speed bump. The gate's now open. And through we go. So that could have been smoother. I'm not sure if it was just late to recognize the gate or if it was recognizing the speed bump, but it certainly felt like a pretty sharp stop there at the end to avoid hitting either other, either one of them. There's a speed bump here, which uh, it did not see. It just hopped that one, but that was one of the soft speed bumps as opposed to the very hard speed bumps you sometimes encounter. I don't always slow down for that particular one. 
I'm wondering if that would have been a little better in the daytime. So it was safe, even if not very comfortable. But I think many people would have disengaged at that point rather than giving it time to slow down since it started to slow down so late. We were only going about 25 miles an hour at the time. But still we were within 30 feet of the gate when it suddenly hit the brakes. So it says full self-driving may be degraded Poor weather detected. And poor weather is just rain we're talking about. So we're kind of hugging the left side of the lane like we do when we're passing a truck. Normally the lane is a little bit more centered than this. Now we're centered. But it is raining, and I know with my eyes, it's a little difficult to see the stripes right now. A couple lights ahead, the left lane becomes sort of a sequestered left turn lane that can trap you into having to turn left if you don't get out of this lane in a timely manner. So we'll see if it's able to figure that out without either having to disengage FSD or having to command the lane change, which I guess I'll do if we find ourselves in the wrong lane too late. Still some uh, lightning in the area. I haven't heard any uh, closures announced for the storm passing here since this was certainly an indirect contact from the edge of the hurricane, the center of which is already north of Tampa and still offshore. So after this light, we really don't want to be in this lane because it's less, to, less than a mile before this lane becomes a left turn lane. And they put up barriers to prevent last minute lane changes. And really, I don't know that there's any easy way for the FSD to know what's going to happen because humans all the time are getting trapped in this left turn lane. Now there's a sign saying left turn must turn left. So I'm going to go ahead and command a lane change. And I'm just not sure if FSD could, could know what's coming ahead. It certainly doesn't read those advisory signs. And you can see the divided traffic sign here as that left lane becomes the left turn lane and then there's a concrete median. To our left. So it shows the median now, but it can't really show it before it appears. So unless they put in that left turn lane into the map, there's just no way to anticipate it has to be out of that lane. I could have let it go ahead and fail or succeed, but if I end up trapped in that left turn lane, it cost me probably 10 minutes on my commute to try to get back to the flow of traffic with a couple of light changes and a U-turn required. Mondays at the hospital were always busy if you did not work the weekend, since many people arrive that you don't know, so it takes longer to get familiar with patients that came in over the weekend. the intersection. Again, the stripes are a little difficult to see. We do have reflectors between the lanes. 
with the stripe indicating the left side is just about invisible to my eyes at least. Again, it's before sunrise and it's going to be kind of dark anyway because of all the cloud cover from the hurricane. The little sign showed up again, full self-driving may be degraded or weather detected. The visualization screen still looks pretty normal otherwise. The drainage ditches on either side of this road, I have seen them overflow before from tropical storm rain. seems to be handling the extra water pretty well right now. For people in the area of the uh, Florida-Georgia border, the storm is going to slow down quite a bit. And some people were saying as much as 30 inches of rain were possible. So of course there's some flash flood warnings in that area. In case I didn't mention it, we're here in South Kissimmee in the Poinciana, Florida area. Close to the border between Osceola and Polk County. Polk County most famous for Lakeland, Florida and Sheriff Grady Judd. right lane pretty quickly since we'll be turning onto the hospital property about a block down the road. One thing I've noticed is I have the speed limit set to go 7% above the legal limit and while the car clearly recognizes we're in poor weather there is no automatic feature to uh, lower the speed because of the weather. That might be something worth considering because a human driver normally would not drive quite as fast in the rain. It's said that hydroplaning becomes a risk somewhere between 50 and 70 miles an hour. So we're well below that. But if you've never hydroplaned before in a Tesla, you really don't want to go there. That happened to me once. The tires were kind of old, and I was probably between 60 and 70 miles an hour on the Florida Turnpike when it occurred. And when it happened, the car fishtailed a little bit, and thankfully there were no other cars around. Between the car and me, we kind of recover ourselves into the lane just by taking the foot off the accelerator. With a little bit of steering correction. So here's our lane change. Another warning about uh, full cell traffic may be degraded, poor weather detected, and this time it tooted the horn a little bit horn inside the car that is. Da -da -da. And here we are arriving. So 
So I'll edit the video probably later today, maybe this afternoon, and we'll try to record some more. So. Okay, I'm going to disengage because it did not move into the correct right turn lane to end of the hospital for some reason. Since I made a late turn, somebody tooted the horn at me behind. Not sure why I didn't even slow down. It was clearly shown on the map that there was a right turn to be made and the right turn lane itself was visible. So still some kinks to be worked out. It wasn't doing that on previous versions. Until next time, see you later on.